Hi, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, I'm going to be taking a look at this puzzle in today's video. Um, do uh, have a go at it yourselves before watching. I think that's often the best way to get the most out of this sort of thing. Uh, this is an extreme Sudoku, apparently, uh, from what looks like a Sudoku app. Uh, our extreme Sudoku, normally extremely challenging, uh, so harder than a diabolical puzzle that we probably cover regularly in, in these videos. And one of the things I suppose about knowing that a Sudoku is very, very hard before you start it is that that might influence how you go about solving it. Um, so in particular, if I know a puzzle is going to be brutally difficult, I'll, I'll tend to abandon uh, simple pencil mark notation fairly early. So I'll start off by using what we normally would do. So in this block, for example, you can see a two is limited to one of two positions. Uh, oh, let me do this. Why is there no cursor? Let me, let me solve this. Oh, it will now. Uh, okay. Uh, two limited into one of two positions, therefore I notate that like this, similarly down here. But with an extreme puzzle, this is probably not going to be enough to get us to the end. And so we have to judge when to flip into more. I suppose, uh, comprehensive pencil mark notation. Um, and knowing how difficult the puzzle is might influence how soon we do that. Um, just a quick appeal as well before I actually start solving this in earnest. If you if you do enjoy the content, please do consider becoming patrons of ours on the Patreon site. I'll put a link in the video. Uh, for uh, as little as $2 a month, you can support the channel, and we'd really appreciate it if any of you feel able to do that. So where's my mind always? Uh, I can see an eight actually, let's start with up here. Eight, eight, eight. So this square here is the only position an eight can go in this top block. Um, but where my mind's immediately looking is, well, I suppose two places. Firstly, this eight, nine, seven and seven, five, eight down here. Whenever you have a run of three in a three by three block, it's very restricting. You can, uh, can see, um, we're able to immediately place pencil marks off the back of this, these runs of things. And in fact, if we do that with the twos, you can see the twos here are now locked into row seven and nine in this block. And over here, they're also locked into row seven or nine. So we know that there can't be any more twos in this puzzle in row seven and nine. Uh, let me show you why. For example, if we found this square to be a two, well, the implication of these pencil marks would be there would be a two here and a two here. And we'd have a repeated two in row nine. So we know that's not the case. We know there's no twos in this three by three block in row seven or nine. Therefore, the twos are in one of those three positions and we have a two here. So we're able to get another pencil mark as a result of that. Um, so we can pencil mark some fours there. Look, the other place I, I notice is this five nine in the central row because that's going to force a five and nine pair look into those two squares. Again, very, very powerful now. Not only does it give us these these three squares in some order, I think they've got to be what four, seven and eight. So we can immediately go four, eight, and we know there's a seven. I'm actually going to break with notation here just to really hammer that home to myself that we have four, seven and eight in that central row. Uh, so I need one, two, three, and six to complete the row. Can I do anything with that? No. How annoying. Um, okay, well, we can carry on. So let's use the nines instead. We've got nine, nine. This nine here means there's a nine in one of these two positions. That means there must be a nine in one of those two positions too. Uh, eight, 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 and this eight. Force an eight into this square. Oh, that's nice. That forces an eight into this square too. That removes an eight as a candidate from this square, which gives us a four, seven pair in the central nonet and means there must be an eight here. Let's put that in. I think the puzzle's now, we've done all the eights. This looks right. And pencil mark some ones here because of the one here and the one here. Sixes, oh, well, not sixes sixes in one of those two positions. You can see from the six here and this six as well. And in fact, oh, and that's nice, fours as well. 
fours, fours, so there are fours in one of those two positions. Now, that might be useful. Uh, <laughs> so the place, I mean, the place my mind was immediately looking here was uh, column six, because obviously this four, six means anything we can eliminate from these two squares locks them into these two squares. But you can see, in fact, in column six, we have nothing useful to do that with. Um, let's just check the rest of the row. No, I'm not seeing anything immediate there. One, two, three, five, and nine. No, nope, that's no use. Okay. Let's use this four and this four then. You can see that locks a four into those two positions in this three by three block. Um, oh, and in fact, these fives, look at that. Five and five here also locks fives into those two positions. There's a four five pair now. Now, is that helpful? Uh, it might be. Um, so the first thing I've noticed is that we have fives locked into these two squares. So in this three by three block, the fives are locked into rows two and rows three. And in this three by three block, the fives are locked into rows two and rows three. So we know that the fives must be in row one in this three by three block because they can't be any more fives in rows two and three. So does that help us? Unfortunately, <laughs> I don't think it does. Or if it does, it's not obvious to me how it does. So I think we're shortly gonna reach a point where we need to start switching. Um, extraordinary, I've only managed to actually put in four numbers in this puzzle using sort of the simple me method. So this, this is clearly quite tricky. This one here allows us to pencil mark some ones. Let's do that just in case that reveals anything. I don't think it's going to. Um, right, let's take a look at column six then. So we need to place two, three, seven, and nine. So this square is restricted. That is a two or a nine. Ah, this square is a three or a seven. Two, nine, three, seven. Now this square is also restricted, look, because we already have a two pencil marked into these two squares. So, and with this seven, this square is a three or a nine then. And this one is, ah, that can be anything at all, two, three, seven or nine. So that's no use. Um, let's try, let's try row eight, which has also got a lot of numbers in there then. So two, three, seven, and yeah, so okay. So we've got a seven and a nine here as well. Okay, and there's our first interesting piece of logic. So now we have a bent triple. So pause the video and see if you can see where I'm looking. Um, and I'll tell you now, what I'm looking at is this three seven here, this three nine here, and this seven nine here. You can see that this, so we've got the numbers three, seven, and nine only in these three cells, and each of them is a binary option. So, the way to use this or utilize it is to look at the middle square of the triple, which is this one, and consider the options. So if this is a three, what is the implication? If this is a three, this square has to be a seven. But if this is a nine, this square has to be a seven. Now that is important because it means that in the finished solution, we're either going to have a seven here or a seven here. So we can look round the puzzle and see if we can find squares that see both of the, these squares. I'll add some highlighting afterwards, but if we can find squares that see both these squares. We know they cannot contain a seven. So there are there are a few possibilities, I guess. Um, this square can't contain a seven as a result of that. So what do we say? I think we said the options for this was two, three, seven, and nine. Though so. All we're able to do, therefore, is say that's a two, three, or a nine, which is not massively helpful. So let's look up here. Um, ah, it also seems to be quite open. So the options for this square are four, five, six, seven, and nine. Well, four here, it can be a five, it can be a six, I think. It can't be a seven because of the Y wing. It can't be an eight or nine. So this is a five, six pair as a result of that logic and this square is the square limited to five or nine 
let's just check that four five six seven nine so four five six seven yes okay so this is a five or a nine as well um, right so what else can we do then well oh I see what we can do it's obvious actually I'm being a bit slow so now where can a 7 go in column 6 we know it can't go here because of this 7 it can go here it can't go here because of this 7 and it can't go here because of the Y wing so in fact we're only left with one position a 7 can go in column 6 and that is there now is that useful ah <laughs> I don't believe it I don't think it is um, I might be missing something, but I'm not seeing how to use that immediately. Bother. Um, let's let's continue and have a look further at this this square in particular, because we have do have a five and a nine in the column you can see, and we don't have five and a nine in row two. So this square. What are the options for this square? It can be a one. Can be a two. Can't be a three, four. Can't be a five can't be a six seven eight or nine so this square is a one or a two um, okay uh, all right well I think we're gonna have to carry on hunting for more stuff because I can't I can't quite see how to do anything with that um, so let's take a look at column 8. We've got five numbers in here, so we need 1, 2, 6 and 9. So this can be 1, 6 or 9. One, so this can be 1 or 6. That's better. Is that useful? That might be useful. Let me just check the rest of the column. 1, 2, 6 and 9. That's 1, 2, 9. That, this is a 2 or a 9 as well. Let's just come back up here though, because now we do have we do have a little, as a simple chain here, you can see it, we start here, this square can obviously be a 1, but if it's a 2, uh, that that's also nice because it's a 2, this is a 9, this must be a 5, this must be a 6, and this must be a 1. So again, a bit like the Y wing, but just a slightly longer extension, but it's it's there staring us in the face because all these numbers are so close to each other. If, if this is a 1, or Either this is a 1 or this is a 1. So again we need to hunt in the grid. Are there cells that see both this square and this square? Because if there are, they cannot contain a 1. And I think actually there's only one square that we haven't resolved already and that's this one. Now why does... So this cannot contain a 1. So it can't be a 1, it can't be a 2, it can be a 3, I think. It can be, can't be a 4 or a 5. Ah, it can be a 6, I think. Bother. It can be a 6, can't be a 7, 8, 9. So it's, we've reduced it to two possibilities. Um, so, what are we able to say then about this? Feels like we can use this further, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, yes, we can, we can, nice, yes. Okay, so the fact we have removed a 1 from this square means that we now, there are a few things we could consider off the back of this. We could sit, consider the column and ask ourselves where a 1 could go. We could consider the block and ask ourselves where the 1 could go. Or we could consider the row and ask where a 1 can go. Now, where can we place a 1 in row 3 now? There's a 1 here, look, so we can't put 1 here. We can't put one here, there's one here. We can't put one here because of the little chain we just found. We can put one here, but this was part of a four, five, double, this square. This cannot contain a one. So this is, I think, the only position left for a one in this row of the grid. Now, does that help? Uh, well, yes, it does. First thing I can see as a result of that uh, just looking at this, 
pencil mark one here, but obviously we had a, we pencil mark ones down here. Look, so there's a one locked into one of these two positions where it can no longer go here. So this is a one. Now let's have a look at column uh, eight again here. We need two, six, and nine. And we have a six here. So now this square must be a six. In fact, we can pencil mark sixes there, but we know this is a six. Now, the moment this is a six, this is a nine. Um, now, this ought to be quite helpful now, I'm hoping. Nine, nine. Let's complete the pencil marks. We know now this is two and nine in some order. Therefore, this square must be a three. Therefore, we can pencil mark threes into these two positions. There must be something we can do as a result of this. So two, four, and nine now to place. Ah, where can the nine go in row nine? Well, you can see we have a nine here and a nine here. So the only only one square left for a nine, that's there. That means this must be the two. Uh, now we can unwind. Earlier on we said there was a 2 either in this square or this square. And now this 2 here forces that to be this square. So this is a 2. Remove the 2 pencil mark. This must be a 4 to complete the row. And now you can see that there must be a 4 in one of these three positions. Don't know which one. Oh, in fact, those two positions, so I can pencil mark it. And that removes the four as an option from this square. So there's only one space left that a four can go in now in this three by three block. And that's this square. So let's put that in. That resolves the four, five over here. Four, five. Oh, and I think the puzzle might be solved now because now we've chained into this lot. And we, we've already done some work on this and seen all these cells affect each other. So that's a six, a three, my phone's ringing, this is not a good time. Um, this six here means this is a six and this is a four, this is a four and this is a seven. Um, this square here I think we said was a seven and nine as part of the Y wing, so this is now a nine and this is a five. And I dare, I, I'm not gonna bother to finish off the rest of it, I think, I think this is solved now, it looks to me like it's completely fallen apart. Um, so if you want to, do use it as an exercise just to see how quick your finishing skills are. But two little tricks there to crack an extreme level Sudoku. We needed the Y-Wing, which wasn't too hard to spot. Um, and then we needed this little chain at the top here to give us this one. And once this one was in the grid, the whole thing flowed beautifully. So thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, please subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate that. Do leave comments. Do send us uh, puzzles you'd like to see us solve in these videos. You can reach us either on uh, email, which is crackingcryptic at gmail.com, or on Twitter, where our hashtag is at uh, crypticcracking. Uh, thanks a lot. We'll see you again soon. Another edition.